We are really happy to have you all here to join us in this mission and, and in this conference. Next slide, please. Sometimes we're asked where we work and we actually have a, a few different footprints depending on which foot we're talking about. But we have an office here in, <clears throat> excuse me, in Corvallis, Oregon, and we serve in the area in the Pacific Northwest. Primarily, we focus on uh, Western valleys, uh, coastal areas, arid habitats in the east side of the Cascades. And then we also have an office in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where we focus on the Southwest. And uh, we do a lot of the same things, but just at a smaller scale. Although when it comes to the seed partnerships, we have a very active seed partnership in the Southwest. And then we also have some national projects, such as Project Botany, which is development of curricula for schools. Uh, the Native Seed Network, which is an online uh, resource for, uh, um, uh, for people searching for native seeds, et cetera. And we'll talk a little later about what we're trying to do to improve the Native Seed Network website. And we host the National Native Seed Conference. And to some degree, this conference today has morphed into a replacement for our uh, every other year in-person conference for the National Native Seed Conference. Although we have a focus this year very much on seed partnerships. So next slide, please. And uh, what we do as an organization is we're really focused on restoring, restoring native ecosystems. We put a lot of effort into getting on the ground, uh, boots and hands dirty, uh, restoring habitat, eradicating weeds and replacing unwanted vegetation with wanted native plants. We do a lot of individual species conservation as well, where we are trying to get endangered species off the endangered species lists uh, directly. And that's through habitat restoration and through even introduction of new wild populations. Uh, we conduct research to support these areas and we have an active education program where we connect people and nature. And one of our largest programs in that is running sagebrush plant nurseries in prisons in the West. So we are, we're very active in those areas. Uh, and that's it for a brief introduction of Institute for Applied Ecology and back to you, Alexis. Great, thanks, Tom. Um, and I saw a request to introduce the cats behind me and I will um, always take an opportunity to introduce them. So um, we have Finley, uh, on towards the end of the bed and then cheddar is up um, higher. So those are my two kitties here today. Um, and so now I'd like to turn our focus, um, just a brief intro about uh, the native seed partnerships that are coordinated by the Institute for Applied Ecology. Um, so the idea for this conference was actually born in our Willamette Valley Native Plant Partnership and also known as the WVNPP. And it soon blossomed into this larger conference focused on the Pacific Northwest and the Southwest. IAE currently coordinates three partnerships, two in the Northwest and one in the Southwest. These partnerships range from being two to 10 years old, and they operate in a variety of ways, but all with a similar vision to increase the availability of native plant materials and to provide a foundation for successful restoration and healthy thriving native ecosystems. The Willamette Valley Native Plant Partnership, um, their mission is to provide native plant materials to partners to protect and restore the native ecosystems of the Willamette Valley ecoregion. This is a map of the Willamette Valley ecoregion um, centered in Northwest Oregon. Um, the green dots indicate our partner offices, which you can see are spread out um, north from north up in Portland down to um, Eugene, and then on both sides of the Willamette River, which runs through the center of this region. The pink dots represent our local growers that we work with for native seed production fields. A brief timeline of the major milestones for this partnership. The partnership was formed in 2012 with a group of about 20 uh, local uh, restorationists and agencies and growers. Um, but really 2013 was the flagship year for this partnership 
a memorandum of understanding was adopted and signed. We drafted and adopted a five-year strategic action plan to help determine the direction of the partnership. The first wild seed collections were made and the first seed fields were established. Um, from then on every year, we've continued wild seed collection almost every season and also continued our uh, production fields um, each year. And our first significant distribution to seed uh, to partners was in 2015. And I just wanted to take a moment and really address that timeline. Um, you know, when partnerships are first getting off the ground, there's a lot of excitement and demand, but it's really important to think of these seed partnerships as playing the long game. Um, you know, it took us three years or even more to really get a significant amount of seed available to partners. And so it's important to develop that strong foundation to grow both uh, figuratively and literally. Um, and it can take time to meet the, the seed needs of our partners. Um, but we've done that well, and that is evident in a lot of the accomplishments by this partnership over the last 10 years. We've increased our membership to 33 partners. We've collected 75 pounds of wild seed for 27 native species. Of those 27 species, we've entered 21 into production and distributed 3,000 pounds of native seed to our partners. Also in Oregon and a little bit of Southern Washington, we have the Coastal Native Seed Partnership. This is a newer partnership for IAE. Our mission is to support coastal restoration and revegetation projects with genetically and ecologically appropriate native plant materials. This is a map of our partnership region. It's uh, really just a narrow band in the coast range eco region, focusing on dune, estuary, freshwater, wetland, and uh, coastal prairie habitat. So we have partners from up in Washington uh, near Wallapa Bay, and then down towards the Oregon and California border. The kind of two satellite uh, dots out here are the IAE office and the Oregon Parks and Recreation uh, Department office. So this partnership is really just about two years old. We formed in 2020. Um, it was born in the Oregon Silver Spot Butterfly Working Group, um, where it was noted that a lot more plant materials were needed uh, to do uh, Oregon Silver Spot Butterfly habitat restoration work. Um, we started, we established a few committees, a species selection committee and steering committee to help guide the partnership. We developed an operations plan based on initial input provided by partners. Also in 2020, we drafted and adopted a an memorandum of understanding and our strategic plan, and we started seed collection and established the first uh, seed fields. Last year, we worked a lot on species prioritization and understanding partner demand. We continued some seed collection and production, and then we also started some grower outreach to local coastal growers to really bring this effort mostly to the coast. And coming up, we'll be working on additional seed collection. We're working with the computer science program at Oregon State University to develop a database which will hold information on seed availability, grower capacity, and upcoming project and plant material needs by partners. And then we'll be doing a market analysis to understand um, a little bit more about the demand and need for seed out there. And then finally, just a quick glance at the Southwest Seed Partnership. You'll be hearing a lot more about this partnership on Thursday afternoon. So just a, just a quick slide about their mission. And now I'm gonna send it back to Tom for us a little bit more about seed partnerships in general. Thanks, Alexis. Yeah, so this conference is a opportunity for members of partnerships and those that are interested in using seeds in restoration to come together and, and better understand a variety of things, uh, especially how we use seeds and best practices. But uh, the, the need for native seed is national. In fact, there is a national seed strategy that has been put out by several uh, land managing agencies in the United States. And this is at the federal level. And this came out in 2015, has been renewed as well. So this strategy gives us a lot of directions on, on how to improve native seed availability in the United States. At the same time, 
many grassroots organizations, partnerships have, have sprung up to meet their own local needs. And there's rich variation in how these different partnerships have approached uh, generating the seeds they need for their own local restoration. And these partnerships can learn from and support one another. It's very important that we are able to leverage each other's experience and know-how and get better at seed production and partnerships and, and doing these collaborative processes. So this conference is an opportunity for us to share our innovations in plant materials development and production in their distribution, their use, and best practices overall. Next slide. There are several partnerships already in the United States. We don't know of all of them, I'm sure, uh, but we've got about 18 on our list so far, and these dots represent the very rough uh, centroid locations of these different partnerships. Uh, the one in the Pacific down there is actually supposed to represent Hawaii. So we have a lot of folks out there doing partnerships, trying to make seeds available to each other, uh, to, the, to their members. And now we have a chance to come together in a conference and share some more information about how we're doing these. And honestly, I think of this as uh, a conference that we will be repeated and become better representative of the variety of partnerships that are out there. So we're looking forward to continuing this as a, a tradition and, and getting more of you involved. Next slide. So the Native Seed Network is something that maybe many of you may have heard about. This is a program of the Institute for Applied Ecology and it has its own website and, and URL, nativeseednetwork.org. And we're gonna be rebuilding this website in 2022 and bring back some of the features it used to have and add some new features. Its primary, primary kind of core purpose is to be a, a listing of native seed uh, nurseries uh, so that anybody can in the country can come to the website and find a seed source near them. Uh, it can also uh, uh, have information on the seeds that those individual nurseries sell and to some extent the provenance or where those seeds come from. That's our core goal. Um, but we also want to add new features to the website and making it a hub for seed partnerships so we can find each other. Uh, so all the seed partnerships in the country can be listed together and we can, we can coordinate and, and uh, talk to each other more effectively. And also be a central location uh, to find seed sourcing and seed decision tools. So there are a number of tools out there that have been developed largely by federal agencies or in partnerships with NGOs, uh, but there's no central place where you can find all those tools in one place and, and then and get access to them that way. So we wanna add that feature. And then finally, uh, the Native Seed Network is the convener of the National Seed Conference, National Native Seed Conference. And this has been in person before the pandemic and we're looking very much forward to returning to a, an in-person or a hybrid form of holding the, the large national, in fact, international Native Seed Conference. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, that's it for this part of it. Back to you, Alexis. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so I just wanted to share this map. I've been um, watching the registrations roll in over the past few months. And I started to notice uh, that we were getting attendees from all over the United States, but that we had also gone international to Canada, which is really exciting um, that the word got out about this so far and wide. Um, so I thought it'd be fun to show this distribution on a map to see where we're all coming from today. We have attendees from 27 states and four Canadian provinces. And so along with um, seeing this map where we're all coming from, we wanted to open up a poll um, for just a minute or so um, to ask a few questions about your affiliation as an attendee. So you should be seeing the poll pop up on your screen. It has two questions about whether or not your organization is a member of a seed partnership, and then what describes your uh, affiliation the best, um, as in where are you um, coming from in terms of your organization. Uh, we'll just keep that open for a minute. I can see the results coming in quickly. And we'll go over these results um, after our land acknowledgement, which will come up next. So we'll just have this open for another minute. 
All right. Do oh. you want to move to the land acknowledgement slide? Yeah, and I see that we missed a couple people that were in Alberta. So welcome from Alberta as well. Okay, back to you, Tom. All right, thank you. Uh, it's important for us to recognize where we are on the landscape in the history of our uh, presence here. So with this land acknowledgement, we want to make some effort to do so. We acknowledge that the land on which we work and conduct habitat restoration is the ancestral home to indigenous people. We honor you people and we appreciate your experience living and working on the land since time immemorial and respect your traditional ecological knowledge. Those of us attending this conference are in many places and all of us are on traditional lands. In most cases where native people were forcibly and violently removed. I ask all of you today to consider where you are in the context of the indigenous group that lived here in the past and lives here today. I also ask you to think about how you can contribute to the power, wealth, and health of native peoples. And please consider making a donation today to groups that support indigenous people. And Alexis, if you could click the slide button once, off to the right, you can see a list of some places that you could consider making a donation this morning, right now, if you want to, uh, something that's significant for you. So some of these are from Oregon, like Elderberry Wisdom Farm and Wisdom of the Elders. These are native-led groups. And in the Southwest, we have some groups like uh, Trees, Water, and People and Flowering Tree Permaculture Institute. You can also give directly to tribes in many cases, and as well as at the national level. And, and one I'd like to call out is Native News, which is an organization that sends out a daily native focused news email and needs your support, needs our support. So uh, we also have a place in the community groups and Whova where you can find these and add others if you're interested in making contributions to these groups. So uh, thank you very much. And uh, we'll return back to you, Alexis. OK, thank you, Tom. Um, so we have the results of our uh, introductory poll. It looks like um, about a third of people are joining us from Native Seed Partnerships. About half um, are not a member, and then a couple aren't sure. And our affiliations um, looks like a wonderful and diverse mix from nonprofits, um, nonprofit organizations, about a third of attendees, federal and state government and agencies uh, represent about a quarter. We've got 10% that are private consultants, 3% uh, from tribes. We've got some native seed producers and then students, retired and other make up the rest. So welcome everybody and we're glad you're here. So our final uh, little bit before we go into our morning sessions is a little bit of housekeeping. So I wanted to go over um, a few features in the Whova app and then um, also just share a little bit more about the question and question and answer apps and the chat function. So I'm going to switch my screens here. Um, and show everybody uh, a few details in the Whova app. So wanted to first draw your attention to, is this, Tom, is this showing the, um, yes. the Whova app? Okay, cool. Um, to the homepage. This is the homepage, which many of you were probably visited this morning. And over on the left is a navigation bar where you can find the agenda. And so you'll see here, um, you'll see here the sessions that are coming up. You can click on each one to then join the stream and scroll down to see a little bit more about um, the speakers and what the session is about. Um, I'm seeing we've got about five minutes before our first session. So I'm going to kind of quickly go through this. Um, the community boards, which Tom just mentioned, it's a place to ask um, organizers us questions, but also 
uh, start discussion topics um, for topics you're interested in hearing what others have to say. There's a break the ice function that's kind of fun. And then if you scroll down, here is our Native American Community Organizations Board. This has links to the boards that Tom mentioned in the land acknowledgement, and then also a place where others can provide links to organizations that are meaningful to them. Um, there's a spot for job openings and then other um, items as well. And then real quick, we have a photo contest um, where you can upload your favorite plant photos. We've got a lot uploaded here already. Um, so please spend today reviewing those photos, uploading your own, and then voting. We'll also have voting open tomorrow, but we'll close down the uh, photo contest at our afternoon break tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. And then we'll announce the winner at the end. And we'll announce two winners and each winner will receive one book, either Olivia Carroll's book or Doug Tallamy's book. Um, and then finally, um, a few quick things about um, the uh, programs we're using today. So we're using um, Zoom webinar through Whova. Um, which means we have disabled your microphone and your video, but we are requesting that you use the question and answer and chat functions in the Zoom window um, to uh, ask questions of our speakers and to uh, have comments just in general. So please use the Zoom question and answer app for speaker presentation questions at the end of each presentation. Our question and answer moderator will be using that application to see the questions um, and ask questions for our presenters. So please use that. If you like a question and are interested in the answer, you can press the thumbs up and it will move it up towards the top of the list so we can make sure it gets answered. Um, and I think we are just about out of time um, and getting ready to transition over to our next speaker. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing the screen and um, Tom will be doing our introduction for our speaker in just a couple of minutes. So just take, we'll take just two minutes to um, grab another cup of coffee, run to the restroom, and we'll see you back here to introduce our first speaker. <laughs> 